What's going on church fam? It's church life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So the truth about being alone is this. That's a complete opportunity to become who God created you to be because you don't have any distractions. There's no one around you to distract you, to pull you away from purpose. See, a lot of times it becomes hard for us to find out purpose or just learn who we are as a person because we around too many people, around too many of the wrong people. And these people give you all these different roles to play. So you start trying to become who this person wants you to be or who that person wants you to be. Or you start trying to become the person that you might see on these social media platforms. And slowly but surely, you're losing sense of yourself. See, there's power with being alone because oftentimes we get influenced by the crowd. But if you're by yourself, that's your chance to lock in. See, when you master the art of being comfortable with yourself, when you're by yourself, that's the moment you start becoming a better person. Because sometimes we got to sit alone in order to meditate. And when you meditate, that's how you tap into a deeper conscience of your strengths and flaws. We got to silence the noise in order to override the version of ourselves that we see that we don't like and believe that we are. Most of the time, the version of yourself that you don't like didn't come from you. It came from someone that said this thing about you, that spoke negative toward you, that influenced you in a negative way, leading you astray. And that's the version of ourselves that we don't like. It didn't even come from you. It came from somebody else. See, another hard truth about being alone is this. When you have no phone calls, when people aren't checking up on you, that's when you can start beginning to practice what you preach. Less talk, more action. Because you don't got nobody calling you saying, hey, let's go do this or let's go do that. And at the end of the day, that's something that can potentially become a distraction depending on the activities that they want to be a part of. And they might hit you up so you can be involved as well. See, I couldn't hear the father's voice when I was in a particular environment. When I was in that comfort zone. Because all I wanted to do is hang out and go party. So every single time I thought about doing something different, and wanted to find more purpose, like what's the meaning of my life? I couldn't do that because of all the distractions. Now this ain't saying people are bad and all this kind of stuff, but what I'm saying is this, if you truly want to find purpose, you must enter into a season of isolation. I speak about this all the time. So what happened was this, when the heavenly father finally Call me on that journey when me and my family became homeless at that time. That's when the noise was silent and I was able to hear the instructions of God for the first time when God brought me out of the land of familiar and placed me in the unknown, a place where I wasn't comfortable, but at the same time, I had more clarity on what I should be doing in life. And that's to serve the most high God. That's to glorify his name. That's to develop a testimony. So I can show people that when you turn your life over to the heavenly father, if you ever felt lost, if you ever felt like you didn't have purpose, if you ever just wonder, what am I supposed to be doing in life? God will silence the noise 
if you allow him to take you out of the land of familiar and he will give you purpose. See, that's why the words say pray in that secret place. Sometimes we just can't hear God because we got too much going on around us. And yeah, I get it. You want to be around friends. You want to hang out. You want to socialize with people. But at the same time, you want purpose. You want more meaning. You want to understand what you're supposed to be doing in life. The only way to get to that point is you got to be alone. Lord Jesus used to leave the 12 to go pray for hours. He used to spend time alone with the Heavenly Father for hours. Just gaining more clarity, gaining more resolve to do what God called him to do. See, whenever you want revelation from God, more clarity, more understanding, more wisdom from the Most High God, you must go to that quiet place. And you must have that alone time with the Heavenly Father because majority of the people that God has used in a mighty way spend time alone before they answer their call. Moses and the burning bush, there was nobody around. It was just him and the Most High God. And he told him his purpose in that secret place. Joseph was separated from his family and he had to spend time alone because although he was around people, he was still alone because he wasn't around anybody that was familiar. But not only that, he ended up going to prison and he spent some time in there before God made room for his gift. And then he was moved into a position of power. Even David, he was just tending to the sheep. And then finally, he was anointed to be king, slay Goliath, had to hide himself from Saul, who was trying to kill him. But over the course of time, God ended that pursuit and David became king. And Lord Jesus, he used to spend time alone all the time to pray. He was alone when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. So the point I'm trying to make is this. Whenever God is going to move in your life in a mighty way, he first must separate you from all of the distractions so he can really get your attention. So you won't miss the small details. It happens when we're in that alone place. That's the real truth about being alone. God is giving you a new identity when he isolates you. He's teaching you how to trust him. He's breaking those strongholds that sometimes come from the environment God is pulling us out of. All of this happens when you learn how to be comfortable by yourself. Silence becomes our greatest power when we learn how to just be quiet when nobody's around and meditate on the word of God. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, what do you want me to know now? And just sit there. And I promise you, the Holy Spirit will place a word on your mind. And when that word comes to your mind, Meditate on it because it's attached to your new identity. So I want to end with this. Another truth about being alone. If you're surrounded by a ton of people, right? It becomes harder to accomplish goals that might be in your heart. And it becomes harder to become that person that you envision in your mind. The reason why this becomes a challenge when you are around a lot of people, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. So if you overshare something that you might be working on, they might tell you certain stuff or they might say certain stuff that calls you to doubt it. And so when you start having that moment of doubt, it's just pulling you away from a goal you could have been closer to had you been alone, had you not been sharing your every move. 
and therefore it becomes harder to become that person you envision in your mind that final form version of you because you got other people telling you why a particular thing won't work but at the end of the day how do they know see that's why it's so important to go to that secret place to spend time with the most high god because even the father said with man it's impossible but with god all things are possible there is nothing you can't do as long as god is in your life so this is the truth about being alone with God. That's to finish that sentence. Be alone with God. Let God tell you who you are. Because every word that he speaks will be true. Let God open up doors for you. Let God put you around the people that he called you to be around. Or that he called them to be in your life. Let God do it. But enjoy this season of isolation. I'm telling you, that's the best thing that can happen for you right now. When God finally placed me on a journey and he started giving my life purpose and more meaning, I went 12 years without having any friends. But what happened was I experienced a great awakening. See, I didn't realize when you're in an environment that keeps you stuck. Your eyes, your spiritual eyes are shut. So you don't really know what's going on. You really oblivious to what's really happening around you or in your surroundings. The only thing you know is you always feel depressed and you try to figure out why come I always feel depressed. So what you do is you start going out to the clubs. You start drinking more. You start smoking more. You start going on to them sites more. Because you're trying to fill a void. And this happens when we're asleep. But the only way to truly wake up spiritually, we got to step out of the land of familiar. And sometimes we got to let certain friends go, certain family members go, certain jobs go, and start over. We got to go to a place where nobody knows us. So we can truly lock in to what the Heavenly Father been trying to show us this whole time. So that's what God did for my life. And I started experiencing stuff that I never thought was possible for my life. See, I didn't realize where I was comfortable with was keeping me from growing. So being alone is going to be uncomfortable, basically what I'm trying to say. That season of isolation is an undesirable feeling. You don't want to feel that sensation of being alone or just feel like you can't connect with nobody nobody wants to go through that but you must go through that if you want to transform as a person you want to renew your mind you want to grow spiritually you want to find more purpose and meaning for your life you got to go through it so embrace this season of being alone or having no friends or saying no to the parties Saying no to the sights, the drinking, the alcohol, and all that kind of stuff, the smoking. Keep saying no to it. It's not easy, but we can do it because of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's why we can do it. So, this is the truth about being alone. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.